by the classification of molecules. In general, any polynuclear molecule has three moments of inertia along the three principal axes IA, IB, and IC, which help in the classification. Here is an example. There is IA, there is IB, and there is IC in this molecule which has got four atoms. Let's begin with a group known as the spherical rotors. Now in these, all moments of inertia are equal. That's IA is equal to IB is equal to IC. And have spherical symmetry. That therefore means only one moment of inertia needs to be known in order to define the molecular state. For example, we have methane, silicon tetrahydride, or sulfur hexafluoride. Now, most of these will not absorb in microwave region and hence no pure rotational spectra as they do not have permanent dipoles. Now let's look at symmetric rotors. Now in symmetric rotors, IA is equal to IB, but IC is not zero. That means IA is equal to IB, which is greater than IC for prolate, and IA is equal to IB, which is less than IC for oblate. C is the unique axis in this case. Now examples include halomethane such as chloromethane, ammonia, cyanomethane. They have dipole moments and hence are microwave active. Let's now look at the linear and asymmetric rotors. Start with the linear rotors. Now in these, the moment of inertia IA is equal to IB, but IC is not. That is, one moment of inertia is zero. Examples include carbon dioxide, hydrogen chloride, or CS, which we looked at earlier, and ethane. What about the asymmetric rotors? For these, IA is not equal to IB, which is also not equal to IC. In other words, all the moment of inertia are different. In these, we have examples of water, HCO, and methanol. No three-fold axis in this case, and may have two-fold or mirror planes. The energy levels are very, very complicated. Note that for each of these types of molecules, we have different conditions to determine the rotational energy of the molecule. Let us consider symmetric rotors or symmetric tops as they are known sometimes in detail. Two quantum numbers are required to determine the energy. A. The rotational quantum number J, which describes the angular momentum of the molecule. The total angular momentum, in this case, is equal to h over 2 pi, the square root of open brackets j into j plus 1. B, the quantum number k describes the angular momentum component along the unique axis and is given by k into h over 2 pi. It takes on values 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, up to plus or minus j. Now the energy in this case, Er, is equal to h squared 8 pi squared ic into j, into j plus 1, close bracket, plus open and j bracket, open and minor bracket, h squared over 8 pi squared ia, close, minus, minor bracket again, h squared 8 pi squared ib, close, and close the major bracket, k squared. Let's call this equation, equation a. 
Now, the term in square brackets, that's the red square bracket, is positive for prolate and is negative for oblate. In which case, IB is equal to IC, but is greater than IA, IE for the prolate molecule. Symmetric rotor continued. Because of the second term, the energy spacing will not be constant. Now, what are the selection rules in, the case, in this case? Delta J is still plus or minus 1. In addition, delta K is equal to naught. Hence, ER is equal to BJ into J plus 1 plus, open bracket, A minus B close K squared. Call this equation B. Hence, ER is equal to BJ into J plus 1. Hence, delta ER is equal to B into J plus 1. Thus, for K equals naught, there is a constant spacing of 2B, like before. Hence, if the molecule behaves like a rigid rotor, the effect of K is not shown in the above spectrum. Hence, it is difficult to distinguish the spectrum from that of a linear diatomic molecule. In fact, equation B only applies to rigid molecules. Additional terms must be added to allow for centrifugal stretching of course, just like before. But remember that for linear molecules, the shifting of the energy levels due to this effect is always very small. Let us now include the centrifugal stretching. Of course, that means delta ER now is going to be equal to 2B into J plus 1 minus 2D KJ K squared into J plus 1 minus 4DJ J double prime plus 1 cubed i.e. the spacing should decrease as j increases. The spacing will also depend on k squared. At the same time, k squared will determine the multiplet we obtained for each line, i.e. the fine structure, open bracket splitting of the lines, close. This multiplicity will help in identifying the spectrum from that of the diatomic molecules. As each line will split into a characteristic number of lines, we can now identify the transition. Each line will split into lines corresponding to k squared, i.e. when j is equal to 2, k squared is 4. That means 4 number of lines. Remember j is equal to 3, implies that k is equal to naught, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, i.e. 0 to plus or minus j. Hence, levels are doubly degenerate. Here is a diagram showing exactly what we are talking about here. Hence, the following should be true. j is equal to 3, as energy is 12V, we have that, so we have plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and this one, that's the node, this plus or minus 1, this plus or minus 2, the J equals 1, we have 2B, that is the 0, this is the plus or minus 1, and as we go we finally get to j equals naught, where k is also equal to naught, and we have only one level. If there is rotation about the unique axis, angular momentum will not change, as the dipole moment does not change. Hence, delta k is equal to naught for rotation about the unique axis. For rotation about other axis, delta j still 